Lita Big B L E E T A B I G B E E, and I am Tia's sister. We want to thank everyone for your concerns and for taking the time out to talk with us today. As you can imagine, this has been an incredibly difficult time for our family. We have been overwhelmed by the outpouring of concern and support. There has been a lot of interest in Tia's story, and that is why we are meeting with you this afternoon. Tia will say a few words and then take a few questions. We will not be able to address any legal or technical issues. Again, we are deeply thankful for your concern and for the support that the public has offered. There is currently a GoFundMe page at official, I apologize, at only official duck boat survivors and all the funds raised there will go to support Tia and her family. We have experienced a loss no family should have to endure and we are not planning to do any additional interviews while Tia is in the hospital. This is a challenging time and we ask that your questions be sensitive and considerate considering what the family is going through. Tia Coleman, T-I-A-C-O-L-E-M-A-N. Um, first, want to thank everyone for uh, coming to hear my story and how, how I survived. Um, I want to thank the hospital for taking such good care of me, um, for me and my family. They've been here um, and anything we wanted or needed, they've been, been able to provide that. Um, I want to give a special shout out to my pastor for driving down from Indianapolis um, to be with us. And for all the families and all the people and all the vigils that I've heard about, I haven't seen them, but I've heard about them. Uh, keep us in prayer. We're going to need it. Thank you all. Tia will take a few questions. First, we have NBC Night Hi, Tia. My name's Edward Kaplan. First of all, my most heart felt from those. Can you tell us about how you're not? He's a very strong young man. I won't be answering a lot of questions about him. I want to keep him protected. Um, I just want you to know we love him. And anything that anybody, you know, can do is to definitely keep him in prayer. He's going through a lot right now. And he's, he's holding up just fine. How do you begin to recover from something like that? Um, that's a hard question. I've never, I've never had to recover from something like this. I don't know if it is, I don't know if there is a recovery from it. Um, the biggest thing is a lot of prayer. A lot of prayer, a lot of support. Um, a lot of, that's all I know. I don't, I don't know how to begin. It's, it's only the beginning, so I don't know. W-E-T-H-R-T. Yeah, uh, Tia, you talk about um, right now the support system you have and the faith that's helping you get your Absolutely. Um, first of all, um, I've, I've been raised um, <laughs> the, what I call the right way. Um, I've been raised in um, Apostolic Church my whole life. I also have a ton of a ton of family praying for me, being behind me. Um, as soon as they found out, they left in the middle of the night to come down. My pastors even come down. I've had my friends come down here to support me, and this not this isn't all the family. This is just some of the family that you see here. I've had tons of family members and friends 
sending uh, requests and asking how I'm doing and supporting. So that's the only way I'm getting through this is through through God and through a lot of, and a lot of people here in the city. I've had pastors from the city come and they prayed for me and said they'll keep me in, in their thoughts and prayers. It's the best way I'm getting through it. What about going home? Going home, I already know it's gonna be completely completely difficult. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna do it. I'm a, since I've had a home, it's always been filled. It was, it's always been filled with little feet and laughter. And my husband, I don't know how I'm gonna do it. I just know that I'll continue, continue to need the support of my family, my friends, and even my extended family and friends I haven't met. I'll need that. Yeah, you just you said that you wanted to share how you were able to survive. How, how were you able to survive? I've always loved water. I don't know if it's a Pisces or what. I always loved water. Um, but when that water came over the boat, I didn't know what happened. I had my son right next to me. But when the water filled up the boat, I could no longer see. I couldn't feel anybody, I couldn't see. I just remember, I gotta get out, I gotta get out. And I don't know if somebody pushed me or what happened, but I hit my head on the, on the part of the boat. And when I got out into the water, it was ice cold. And I remember as we were going into the water, they said that the lake stays pretty warm like in the 80s. So I knew since it for me being so cold that I'm at close to a box to the bottom, I'm not close to the top. And I just remember kicking and swimming, swimming up to the top. And as I was swimming up, I was praying. I said, Lord, please let me get to my babies. I gotta get to my babies. I gotta get to my babies. And I was kicking and it, the harder I fought to get up to the top, I was getting pulled down. And I kept fighting, I kept fighting. And then I said, Lord, if I can't make it, there's no use in keeping me here. And so I just let go and I started floating. And as I started floating, I felt the water temperature change and it got warmer. And as it got warmer, I knew I was to the top. So I stuck my hand out and I kept swallowing tons of water. The waves were crashing over my face. And every time I give my head a little bit above water, I scream, help, help. And finally I came up to the surface and I saw it's a great big boat out there, uh, like a river boat. And they were, oh my God, they were jumping in and saving people. They were throwing life rafts out to everybody. But I couldn't reach it, I couldn't get there in time. And so somehow I managed to get to the boat. These beautiful people, angels, I don't know who they were. They pulled me up. And when they pulled me up from the boat, I didn't see any of my family but I believe I survived by God and by good Samaritan. Kansas City Star. The captain did say something about life jackets. He said, above you are your life jackets. There's three sizes. He said, I'm gonna show you where they, are, where they are, but you won't need them, so no need to worry. So we didn't grab them. I really don't know. Um, I'm kind of in and out <laughs> remembering uh, my new facts, but it was said that we uh, that there are life jackets, but don't worry, you will not need them. And we were never told after that to grab them. I 
I have no idea. I, I just know when the water, I was sitting close to the front, so when the water came up over me, I immediately floated up, but I hit my head on something, so that's all I know about that. The last thing I wanted to ask is um, if the plastic curtains that were around the side of the boat, did they prevent you from getting out of the window? I have no idea. Again, I can't answer that. Uh, I, I don't know how I got out. I, I, I couldn't see anything, so Thank you. you're welcome. It took me maybe a minute to realize. It took me a minute before the boat went under um, because it was the water was splashing. It was so hot. We thought this was just great, you know, the water splashing. But when a big swell came in, that's when I got nervous. And then the next big swell is what, I didn't know the boat capsized. I thought it went under. So when that next big swell came in, I did go under. So I don't, I, I don't know how long that was. Hi, Tia. Um, sure. They, um, before we left out, they just said, um, you know, if you want to come back, you know, we'll let you know. They just said, um, it's a storm coming, so go to the water first so you can avoid it. So they, they did say storm. Mm -hmm. Um, did the sky look cloudy? Was it noticeably? Not right then, it didn't. No. Nope. No. It, even when we first hit the water, it didn't look cloudy. Did anybody say we should, you know, we should turn back, we should go out? Did anybody expect any nervousness or? No. You are. Yeah. Hello. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I was wondering, you said you were sitting in the front of the boat. If you can give me an idea from your vantage point of what the greatest obstacle yourself and everybody else on the boat was facing in terms of being able to access things. Was it the water rushing and pressing into the windows? Was it life jacket not being true? Was there one thing that stood out to you? The biggest thing that stood out to me is No matter what, I, I felt like if I was able to get a life jacket, I could have saved my babies. Because they could have at least floated up to the top and somebody could have grabbed them. And I wasn't able to do that. Um, I can't say what the restriction was because when I went up, I thought I hit the ceiling and I thought I was dead because I, I, I didn't know how to get out from, I'm great with directions, but under, in water I'm not, I, I, I don't know which way I'm facing. So when I went up, I didn't know if I was in the ceiling or I figured I was in the ceiling because I wasn't moving and then something just kept pushing me. I kept floating up and so I don't, I don't know if I was on a, coming through a window or if, I, if somebody did remove the remove, I have, I have no idea. I never want to be on any boat ever again in my life. Anybody's boat. And one last follow up. You can tell us, we're hearing some about your family. How do you want them to be remembered? This is supposed to be a fun family. Mm -hmm. I want them to be remembered how they were. Um, I lost nine people. I lost my husband. Who was? He would have killed a rock over anybody, over my family. He was so loving. And he didn't look like he was, but he was so loving. Um, to remember my babies. My oldest son was Reese, who was on the autism spectrum. But he made every day 
worth living and knowing. And he was the happiest, sweetest little boy anybody would ever want to meet. I love uh, everybody remember my Evan, who was seven, who was extremely smart, quick, and witty. He loved life. And he was a great brother, a big brother and a little brother. And then my baby, Aria, she was only one. And she had a thousand personalities wrapped up in her one. She would blow kisses and she would fight. <laughs> she was a, a little fireball and my only girl. And then to remember my Uncle Ray, he was the oldest of the homies. He, was <laughs> he liked to laugh and have a good time. My father-in-law, who had a heart of gold, he would give anything for anybody. My mother-in-law, who was like a second mom, I never knew I would marry into such great people. I never knew it. She was always there with a supportive word. My sister-in-law, who I call my sister, because she was. She was so loving. <laughs> and she'd do anything for her family. For my nephew, Max. <laughs> the sweetest baby ever. He loved big hugs. Kids. So I would ask everybody to remember my family as the beautiful people they were. I don't have anything to say to the owner. I don't have anything to say to the captain. To the survivors of the boat, I'll continue to keep you in my prayers. I know what you're going through. To all the lives that were lost. With so much. To all the lives that were lost, I just pray that they're continuing to live on in their family's hearts. Hotel we were staying at, we uh, the kids always love to swim in the water. We, we just like getting in the water. Um, so we all went down to the water, had a good time in the pool, and then I found myself sneaking off to get in the hot tub. And here come those little bodies coming in there with me. And they're like, "Oh, this feels so good. This feels so good." <laughs> I said, "Get back in the kiddie pool." <laughs> so. Um, I'll remember always how um, they always love to be around family. Um, we end up going out to eat while we were here. We went to go to Corral. And I I hadn't been and I don't know when. And I guess I forgot how much food they had. So the kids were like, can we have this? I was like, we're on vacation. On vacation, you can have whatever you want. So I started piling up their plates. And they were eating up all this food. And they had uh, cotton candy. And Rainbow sharp, this stuff you probably shouldn't give your kids all the time, but that's the kind of parent I would do stuff like that. Um, that, you know, occasionally um, we did. And I enjoyed our, we had a, um, a big band. I enjoyed us being uh, together and laughing at each other's stories and just comforting each other. Did you all see any shows? And how did you all decide We did not see shows. Um, we picked. In our family, like I said, my son is autistic. My oldest son is autistic. So a lot of things that quote unquote normal families or people that say their normal families do, we don't always do. Um, and that's another thing I love about my family. They'll, um, they would make the situation fit for him. So we have to do something to keep him where he can jump up and be entertained or he likes to ride, so he, he can ride. So that was one thing we knew, he loved water and he likes to ride. So we were like, that worked out for everybody. 
We could go drive around on the boat. We could get in the water, and it would be a good time. And we had planned on going out to eat afterwards. So we did not see any shows. Um, we did on our family trips. We always tried to cater for. Um, this is our first time coming to Branson. We go as a family. We would travel to different places. Um, the the best one that I've been to uh, for me, I'll say, is uh, Mackinac City, Michigan. Um, it was so peaceful. It was the clearest lake I had ever seen. Uh, when I stepped in, in Mackinac City, it felt like I stepped back in time. With, like, I'm like, they don't even have internet. They got dial-up. You know, what's, what's going on? So I felt like that was one of my favorite places to go. Um, the kids' favorite place was South Carolina, Florida Beach. Um, we don't know for sure. Um, I'm still recovering just from swallowing so much water. Um, but I'm doing better, I'm breathing better. So, small steps, but, but steps in the right direction. Thank you. 41 minutes. Yes, right here. Thank you so much, Tia. You talked to us about those moments when you started getting nervous. Can you tell me as a mother what that panic was like not knowing where your children were at that moment? Um, it was, it was the worst, the worst feeling you could ever feel. Um, and then the one thing I remember saying is, if they don't make it, Lord, take me too. There's really no need for me to be here. And I, I just, it's very hard to describe. As a, as a mother, it was very hard to describe. It's, it, it, I've never felt that feeling again, and I would never wish that on anybody. And as that, as that, at that moment when you said you just gave up and started floating, what was that like to just give all that up? Um, I thought I was going to die anyway, so it just felt like, it felt like the right thing to do at the time. And are you happy you made it to the top? I don't know yet. Uh, I think only time will tell. That moment when you were floating up to the top. Branson, Charlie, excuse. Hi, Hi. You mentioned just the work with the hospitals. Can you go into the resources the hospital provides with the recovery process for my Um, I can't go into too many details, um, but I can say that People are constantly checking on me. I've had um, people that, of course, with permission, have asked that they pray for me, pray with me. They've had any kind of resource I need, counseling come in, anything like that, they've provided. Um, it's above and beyond anything I can imagine. Hey, Emily. Yes, Miss Sullivan. You talked about going through the worst thing. What would you say if you had just a chance to talk to those families at this point in time? Um, I would tell my husband that <laughs> what I always tell him, we in this thing for life, better or worse. Um, and I would let him know again just how ready a father he is. Um, I tell my Uncle Ray, um, I tell him how much we love him and we appreciate him. I tell my father-in-law that uh, since I lost my own father 20 years ago, he is my father. Um, I tell my mother-in-law, thank you for all your wisdom and your love. I tell my sister-in-law, don't sweat the small stuff. 
You know I got your back, sis. I kissed my my nephew. I tell my oldest son, Reese, don't worry about what the world puts on you. Make your own new world. I tell my son, Edmund, that you can be anything you want to be. And I kiss him. And we, we talk about each other and call each other names. And I tell my daughter, Aria, which I still would whisper in here, always look out for your brother. Keep the family together. You talked about, it's no doubt your faith is Why do you think you're here and all I have no idea. There's no thinking. It's really not a thinking matter for me. I've tried it. It's something I, I can't comprehend. I can't explain. Um, I don't have the capacity to understand it. Only thing I think is, you know, God must have something for me because there's no way I, I should be here. I didn't know I was being rescued until people's hands reached down and grabbed me. And the, I was so exhausted from swimming so much and fighting against the current that I still didn't think they were going to rescue me. I didn't realize I was rescued until they pulled me off. And I don't know if it was CPR, I have no idea. I, don't, I just remember spitting up some water and knowing that I had made it out of that water. And it was then that I think I was, I was just numb because I didn't know, at that point I didn't know where anybody was, anybody. I didn't know even where my nephew was. I didn't know where anybody was. So when I finally realized I was rescued, I still wasn't happy because I didn't know where my family was. I didn't hear it. I was sitting in the front. I didn't hear that enough. Um, from what I know, nobody grabbed a life jacket because I don't think they heard anything. I can't speak for them. I can only tell you what I heard though, or did not hear. Was this your first time on this boat? Yes. Thank you all for coming.